everything kind of fell in love with the property when I first stepped on it. And when I came for my first day of, you know, work here, it was, you know, just really exciting to sort of get to dive straight in. My office at the time was actually in the house. So I was like getting to sit upstairs in the house and sort of be surrounded by it as I was sort of diving in head first to try to catch up and, and hit the ground running. <laughs> so I know this place definitely is a unique spirit feels sort of like crunchy i guess but it does have a really it, it has a unique sense of place that you don't get to see a lot of so this farm andalusia farm was uh o'connor's residence from late 1950 to 1964. uh she really moved down in here down here to the farm after getting diagnosed with lupus uh, though initially she thought it was a diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis uh, so this farm was her family's farm. It belonged to her uncle, Bernard Klein, before her mother kind of co-inherited it. And currently, as it stands, we still have her main house. We have many of the original outbuildings that were there when the farm was in operation. And we have this interpretive center that we're standing in uh, that sort of allows us to supplement our uh, education and interpretation of Flannery. So Flannery had always been a bird person. You know, like some people are dog people, some people are cat. She was a bird person. So, you know, ever since she was little, her family had always had birds, not so much when she was living downtown in Green Street, but there'd always been things like chickens and stuff around. And it was after she'd moved here to Andalusia, she decides she sees a newspaper ad for some peacocks from a breeder, I believe it was in Florida. Uh, and she just decides, why not, right? Uh, she'd already had several other kind of birds uh, already, so she was just... She's gonna bring them up and she was gonna see them. And really, she kind of just really kind of fell in love with them. They're very dramatic birds. So I can kind of see why she would have uh, fallen in love with them. And so she, they, she really, she bought four, uh, two adults, two um, chicks, and they kind of just blossomed. Uh, and she ended up with 40. Closest like descri place description one to one would be her short story "Good Country People," uh, which describes a dairy barn, a scene. Uh, I won't spoil it for those who haven't read it. Uh, but part of the short story takes place in a dairy barn uh, up on the K loft. It is an almost one to one perfect description of the dairy barn that still stands today on this property. Uh, since that is also considered one of her more personal stories, that makes sense. Uh, the other big one I would say would be um, the story of the displaced person, uh, which very much reflects some of the dynamics that were happening on the farm at the time and also features events that we know happened here on the farm through Flannery's own letters. So the farm after, so Flannery passes in 1964 and her mother just really can't be here anymore part of you know she's grief everything there's a lot of pain in there so she actually moves back into town she kind of locks up the doors the farm remains in semi-normal operation until about 1970 when it shuts the sort of beef farm shuts down in the you know as the years go on they do actually the field we're standing in right now uh they did hay it for some money so they did cut it and hay it and there were still some animals living here so they did like make regular visits to the farm to feed the animals so that's really what happened the house itself was really locked up it was run by a private foundation until 2017 when the uh, property the ownership was gifted uh, or transferred to georgia college and state university uh, they closed it down for about a year and reopened in 2018.